So I have to start by acknowledging this is not actually welcome to Focus Right for Matt Goldberg. This is welcome back because I think maybe unbeknownst to most people in the audience, you, when you were CEO of Lonely Planet, gave the keynote at Focus Right at ITB Berlin in 2010. Yeah, it's so, so. good to be back. I, I, I remember that day really, really well. I gave a keynote. Uh, it was my first in the travel industry. Uh, and I was talking about uh, the travel guide space and how it had been the definitive uh, kind of uh, format that uh, Lonely Planet represented. And following me on stage was somebody from TripAdvisor. <laughs> and so I got a question about TripAdvisor and how TripAdvisor had disrupted the travel guide space. And my answer back then was TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor is not a travel company. It's not even a, 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 a guide company. It doesn't understand travelers. Look at what it does. It just brings traffic on, sends it off-site, and makes money on the arbitrage. And so we got a laugh out of that. I was poking my eye, but uh, now I get to come and work at TripAdvisor and think about what does a travel guide company for the next century look like, and that's what I'm excited to do. Wonderful. Well, we are looking forward to hearing you talk about that in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. You know, this is your first interview since joining TripAdvisor July 1st. We appreciate you joining us for that opportunity. Um, I wondered, since TripAdvisor is all about the first-person reviews, I wondered if you could maybe just give us a very brief TripAdvisor review of your first four and a half months. Yeah, so I just got through my 100 days, which was very exciting. A lot of learning about the foundation and the enduring assets of this great company, from a trusted brand to a community of like-minded travelers that want to contribute and help one another, to uh, an opportunity to leverage data in a much more thoughtful way. And as I get into the next 100 days, I sort of feel like people should be writing the book about the second 100 days, because that's where the action is, and we're really excited about uh, thinking through our strategy for the future, where we're going to lean in and reinforce uh, the assets that we have to work with, and where we're going to reimagine the future of travel on behalf of the travel consumer, which is what we're so excited to do. So I've heard you use that reimagine word several times, actually. I was listening in on your call with the financial analyst last week, and I heard you say that. So we definitely want to talk about that. I thought maybe we can frame our discussion around our conference theme of travelers, titans, trailblazers. So certainly, TripAdvisor's been around 22 years. It's squarely in that titan category. But of course, it's a very different world today than it was in the early 2000s. How can TripAdvisor remain relevant? Yeah, I don't think that TripAdvisor it falls into a titan category. I, you know, I, I look at TripAdvisor and think about it as it's, um, it's actually maybe more like the David uh, in, in the category. <laughs> uh, you know, and we have an opportunity to really uh, uh, sort of reinforce our relevance, which is your point. Um, I think we have done some things really well in the past. You mentioned the review. I think we can uh, enhance how we think about content. The beautiful thing about it was that it was a scalable content model. Right. But maybe it didn't progress far enough. Maybe we didn't innovate there far enough. So when we think about putting the consumer at the heart of everything we do, we think about doing that through our trusted guidance, through that content model and thinking about even more formats and being even more immersive, and then thinking about doing it wherever the traveler is, and that means leaning into a mobile-first future. So let's talk about some of those points then. When you talk about the trusted guidance, who who is that audience that trusts TripAdvisor? I think the audience that trusts TripAdvisor is actually a really interesting one. At the heart, it's the passionate traveler. It's the traveler who is thinking about, this decision I'm about to make is a really important one. It comes with a certain amount of risk. I'm spending a lot of money on it, and there's a lot of uncertainty. I want to verify and validate the choices that I'm making. So this guidance path of thinking about how can you help somebody identify the choice they're going to make and then find something they love and then feel really confident when they're going to make it happen. But I also think we move even beyond that because I think we are well known for bringing the voice of real people who have been there before, and we can lean into that too. Uh, ultimately, that trust is still a fundamental part of what our brand stands for. In the travel space, we're more trusted than many of our competitors, including Google. So we need to reinforce that. We don't want to rest on laurels. I heard that mentioned. We need to lean into that and continue to build on that. Do the younger generations trust TripAdvisor? 
Are they turning to it as the, the guide for their travel, do you think? I do think younger generations are aware of TripAdvisor. I think that we can think about uh, the features and benefits that a young person wants to have, the user experience. You know, in many ways, um, what we're all about is connecting people to experiences that are worth sharing, and we need to make sure that our product experience reflects that as well. Short form video? Absolutely. Can you, can you tell us any more about that? You know, what's it's, uh, you know, it's funny, we're, we're in the messy middle of really identifying the areas that we want to lean into okay. and, and probably uh, make even more prominent, and the areas that maybe we want to think about doing differently, and then there will be some areas that we'll stop doing. And so um, I, I'm not ready to tell you exactly the areas that we're prioritizing, but that'll come soon enough. We're, we're certainly excited about thinking about what an immersive uh, travel experience through content can look like. Okay, so as we think about, you just referenced, yeah, there may be some things you stop doing. Um, you know, the one that has been a bit of a question mark in the last year has been TripAdvisor Plus. It's gone through a couple different iterations. Uh, I noticed that last week in your call with analysts when you were discussing your Q3 results, you did say, we think we can certainly do better with consumer-facing products and services, and we haven't finalized how Plus fits into that. Yes, yeah, so um, with TripAdvisor Plus, um, uh, you know, I studied it uh, as I was thinking about coming into the company, but I didn't really have a first-hand experience. So I spent the last 100 days really understanding from our teams, what do we like about it, what do we think could be different? And the one thing I wanted to make sure we didn't do was just to immediately have a reaction that we should put an end to something. So um, we are thinking about broadening the aperture, and what does it mean when we put the traveler at the heart of everything we do, and we really start there, and we have it flow into our products and think about being product-led in the innovation that we pursue? How can we engage consumers in a far more meaningful way? Because as I said back before, it used to be that we had a one-size-fits-all, get someone on the site, get them off the site, that's how we monetized. Thinking through engagement and why somebody would come directly either to our site or download our app, what that use case is, what they're trying to do, both needs and wants that I heard this morning, uh, and thinking through what that curation can look like so that it's more relevant to that consumer. Thinking about how we leverage data to understand who's arriving and what customer journey might they want to go on. If we do that well, we can reinforce the relevance of the products that got us here, like our meta business, right. and we can also think about engagement that'll take us down multiple paths, one of which will be the thought about why would somebody become a member of TripAdvisor? What does that look like? It's a little bit jarring to start with, you're a member and we're going to charge you something right away, especially when the history hasn't been that I pull out my wallet and put down my credit card on the site. Right. So if we can think about what it means and what the value exchange there is, frankly, starting with a free experience that's much more resonant, that's much more useful, um, I think we can uh, have a more meaningful path to what could be membership economics. But I will say, even if we didn't wind up in a place where the consumer was paying, there's a number of different ways. And I love the diversity of our monetization, right? Yeah. Meta can continue to be fundamental. Uh, we need to think about what makes us different and how to reinforce it, and we have a lot of ideas there. Uh, media economics can continue to grow. Uh, and we can think about um, how to be a better uh, uh, match between the demand side that we represent and the supply side that we represent. Because it's the suppliers that rely on us uh, wanting to match with those uh, consumers that I think will be the magic of what we can do in that center space. And not arbitrage where you're not delivering necessarily a, a unique value proposition in the middle, but actually thinking about how to do it even more effectively. And just can you give us a sense how soon we may see some activity there? Is this a, a six month, a 12 well, month? And let me start with um, the data proposition because I've been talking about it a little bit. And as you probably know, I spent the last uh, five or seven years really thinking about data companies, frankly, thinking about how data is influencing every kind of company in the world. And of course, travel um, is, is no different. Uh, TripAdvisor has a uh, wealth of data, uh, signals of intent, a lot of things that we actually know about what consumers and travelers want, where they want to go, the kinds of experiences they want to have, 
um, what their preferences are on accommodations. And so if we can take that signal of intent and make it far more useful, and so we're going on a journey to put a foundation in place, it's immediately going to make sure that we make better decisions, that it flows into the way that we think about our future products, about our MarTech, about our media business, about the way we work with partners. We can then think about leveraging that data uh, to, to imagine future commercial opportunities. And what I would say about data is that we've already started on the journey, and I think okay. we'll start to see some impact of that uh, in the first half of the coming year. What about your mobile app? You know, there's been a lot of talk as we hear some of the other companies talking that the mobile app is really a fundamental at the heart of what they're trying to do with that loyalty and engagement. Any, can you share anything about what you have planned possibly for the mobile app? Yeah, the first thing that I would remind you is that uh, TripAdvisor is a group, uh, a family of brands, which includes TripAdvisor, Viator, and The Fork. Uh, some of the things we're really excited about what's happening in Viator and the experiences space where they're a leading uh, player and actually uh, really executing well yeah. and delivering a, a proposition through their app. We're also seeing incredible app usage through uh, uh, The Fork. We maybe haven't been as successful at TripAdvisor with our app. And I think the reason is that um, we put the app out there, the pandemic happened, we didn't continue to lean into it, we worried about some other things. And as you know, when I was leading Lonely Planet, we were the leader in mobile, tra uh, uh, mobile travel apps. Uh, back then we saw it as a, as a paid proposition. Um, and I want to rethink, how do you make the TripAdvisor app uh, use case a fundamental and clear value proposition for the consumer. It's largely going to take us into the in-destination space, okay. where I think we have a really interesting right to play. And we have some ideas that we're excited about. You know, I think yeah. about uh, just the, the, the prospect of what's around me now. You know, I, I, I went with our app into New York uh, the other day, and I went and I had uh, a lunch at a uh, restaurant that uh, I, I found through TripAdvisor, and I kind of figured out how to use the app to figure out what experiences were around me, um, what hotels were around me, what other places I could go for uh, with, my, with my kids uh, that afternoon. Um, but it was hard to do that. I think we can come up with a user proposition in that app that is far more clear and far more valuable. Wouldn't people just go to Google Maps for that, though, if they're in New York City? I think Google Maps is really good for a moment in time, you know, for that search that you're doing in a moment in time. I think where we can really differentiate ourselves is having a point of view, bringing, uh, uh, really curating uh, uh, rather than giving you everything, right. and having a longitudinal experience that goes over a long period of time. You know, the brilliance about Google is they always get credit for everything because of their, their model, but people are actually doing a lot of different things that find oftentimes come back to Google and get them that last touch attribution. And that's something that uh, we really want to lean into and make sure that we're getting value f for that, both with the consumer and with our partners. Okay, so you mentioned Viator. You know, that's certainly been a very positive story uh, in the last year. I heard on the call up revenue up 179% compared to 2019 levels. Early this year, of course, there was the confidential S1 filed related to a possible IPO. Where does that stand today? Yeah, of course, um, uh, that was uh, earlier in the year. I joined in July. Yes. So I had heard about that and I would listened yeah. to the calls and I would talked to the team. Uh, and that uh, moment where they uh, identified that opportunity was really about crystallizing value for this unbelievable asset that was probably undervalued in the portfolio. And I'm open to any way that we can crystallize value for our assets. The markets today won't allow us to pursue that. There's a lot going on that means, uh, you know, pursuing that uh, avenue is probably not in these uh, moments. So we're not going to wait for that. We're putting our head down and the team is executing. Uh, they're doing an amazing job leaning into their brand, into their user experience, uh, working with their partners to create more value. And they're really seeing the results. I mean, the acceleration you are seeing there is a combination of a market that is exploding and is going to be, what, $250 billion or more by 2024. Only 20% of the activity is booked online, and with other categories being much more than half, we don't see any reason why uh, we won't see that in experiences as well. And so we want to make sure that Viator and the team is in a position to move fast, lean into their market opportunity, reinforce the brand, because a lot of people actually don't know about this category and right. certainly don't know which brand to turn to. We think the combination of Viator and TripAdvisor is very, very powerful. Top of the funnel, really good booking experience, and so we plan to be a leader in that space. 
So it sounds, if I'm hearing you correctly, then it's sort of the, the IPO effort is pushed aside and now it's all in, let's strengthen, we, move ahead. I, I wouldn't want to suggest to you that we've made any decisions about what we will or will not do in the future there. Okay. We're open to all avenues. There's a lot of ways to crystallize value. That's one of them. When the markets change, I'm sure we'll be talking about what should we do. But in the meantime, we put our heads down and we focus on that consumer and delivering a really remarkable customer value proposition. I know, you know, we covered yesterday the... Uber has come on as one of your newest partners, so now you yeah. can book Viator experiences in the Uber app, um, and you also have your new brand campaign, Do More with Viator. Um, can you just talk any more about any, I heard you mention it on the call again, about driving higher levels of direct traffic and engagement with Viator and creating multiple opportunities for monetization. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Viator is doing a great job in looking at every opportunity to get people to come direct, to download the app, uh, to have a, an experience that they can come back to. And we're, we're seeing the results. It's driving repeat rates, it's driving higher uh, lifetime value, uh, it's driving uh, an awareness of the category and the role that Viator plays in that category. And they'll continue to do it. Uh, their brand campaign uh, is one that um, uh, the company is excited about. They're really uh, trying to articulate what Viator stands for in the space. And if you you haven't seen uh, the, the, you know, the, the video that they've done, they're, they're really good. They've got a couple of spots that are yeah, going through CTV and, and streaming, uh, streaming video. So we're, again, um, leaning into that opportunity and excited about what the team there is doing. And then just briefly, can you touch again on the, kind of the TripAdvisor core? And I heard you talk a bit about that, some of the plans you have there. Yeah, so TripAdvisor Core, again, we will um, articulate publicly a, a, a refreshed uh, approach to what we want to do, uh, certainly in the coming year. Um, I think what you can rely on is that um, as we think about the traveler and what they come to us for, we're going to lean into our heritage. We're going to draw on that trust and credibility. We're going to think about enhancing our content proposition. We're going to find new ways to connect the community. We're going to do it wherever they are. We're going to help them identify the things they love to do, and we're going to help them make it happen because we know that the decision point is a pain point. And we think we have a right to help there. And when we do that, it'll take us into uh, some, some old territories that we've done and sort of not only reinforcing, but as I said earlier, reimagining how we can do that. Right. And it'll take us into some new territories about how we might want to do that different. And I think when you put all of that together, it brings me back to why I came to the company. Because my background is in travel and technology in media and marketplaces, and really thinking about getting all of that to work together. And I think TripAdvisor becomes the modern media marketplace that is the definitive guidance platform of the next century. Okay, that's a bold statement right there. So we look forward to watching that development. Um, I, I'm curious as I think back now to reframing it around our theme, can TripAdvisor be seen as a trailblazer again? Absolutely. I mean, uh, innovation is fundamental to our DNA. And so, you know, like lots of companies over time as we go through S-curves, you know, sometimes we focus on optimizing instead of innovating. We focus on what we've done in the past instead of pioneering. But we have a pioneering spirit and we're going to continue to lean into innovation. I think innovation is a little bit like travel. You know, you want to do enough planning up front so you have a pretty good idea of what you're going to do. You want to leave enough uh, uh, room for serendipity, right. and you want to learn along the way, and that's what we plan to do. And I think what will be different maybe than what's you know, happened in the last few years is we're going to focus on operational excellence, and we're going to focus on making sure that we really lean into uh, product market fit before we go and make bold statements. We might make bold statements about our vision, which I just did, and I make yes. no apologies for bold statements about vision. But when it comes to our execution, I think we'll have to leave our uh, execution and, and, and the way that we deliver to speak for itself. Okay. Well, before we finish up with you, I just, you know, you are so somewhat fresh to our audience here. I'm curious, anything that you can share with us maybe that we wouldn't learn from your resume about you? That's a good question. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a media junkie, but the media that I uh, spend the most time with is actually the good old-fashioned book. Um, I, I'm always reading a different book. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I like to say that that technology, um, it's 500 years old, uh, it's never gone out of style, and you don't need to replace the battery. So I am a book junkie. 
an actual book, not an a Kindle. An actual book. Or... I have a Kindle, and sometimes I read on it when it's convenient for me to do it. But if I really want to enjoy something, I'm leaning back and I have a physical book. A any recommendations for the audience that maybe is looking for their next great book? Uh, I mean, there are so many. Um, uh, you know, I, the, the one book that I'm constantly reading, uh, because I think it's one of the greatest ever written, is the Bhagavad Gita, is, is a book that I told uh, our company. I'm always reading the Bhagavad Gita. It's sort of a, I think it's the greatest uh, manual for life. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Well, Matt Goldberg, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Goldberg. Thank you. Thanks. Since humans first began exploring the world, the way we travel has evolved. Those who resisted change were left behind. Those who adapted pioneered paths to the future and became titans of their industries. The strongest of those titans continue blazing new trails. In an industry that never slows down, demand a travel protection partner that's both legendary and visionary. Discover the Allianz Advantage.